Since ancient times, sea travel has played a prominent role in trade and travel. As a result of the Age of Discovery, forms of marine transport were completely transformed at the beginning of the modern age, but it was in the second half of the 20th century that a true revolution took place in this mode of transport. The first tanker ship designed to transport bulk liquid cargo was built in the 1880s. Then, after World War II, large numbers of tankers and container ships were produced to transport bulk liquids and enormous quantities of various goods in intermodal containers. The emergence of this new type of vessel led to a decrease in loading losses, loading time, and costs. The only drawback is long delivery time. These gigantic ships travel all over the world, with their shipping routes starting in similarly gigantic ports. The average length of oil tankers is between 200 and 400 meters, their width about 30 to 70 meters, and their draft is about 15 to 30 meters. Their speed is between 15 and 16 knots. The most important consideration in the design of the hull is to provide balance and safety and to maximize cargo capacity. The largest oil tankers were built in the 1970s, partly for economic reasons and partly for political ones. The largest of them, the 456 meter long Seawise Giant, was built in 1979. Today, oil tankers are the second most important means of transporting oil after pipelines. The primary consideration in the design of the hull is functionality and safety. The bridge, the cabin for the crew, and the fuel tanks are all located in the rear of the tanker, while cargo and ballast tanks occupy the largest part of the ship. Most of the deck is flat with pipelines, oil transfer hoses, valves, and a passageway. The Exxon Valdez oil tanker ran aground in 1989 off the coast of Alaska spilling about 37,000 tons of oil into the water. As a result of this incident, double-hulled ships were introduced and have been used since then. With this new design, oil is pumped into the inner hull, thus protecting the environment from being polluted in case of an accident. When the cargo hold is full, the ballast tanks in the space between the walls of the double hull are empty. However, when the cargo hold is empty, or only partly loaded, the ballast tanks are filled with the required amount of ballast water. Oil tankers are categorized according to size. Super tankers, including Very Large Crude Carriers VLCCs, and Ultra Large Crude Carriers ULCCs, can only dock in a few of the world's ports. Due to their size, these tankers can only navigate through a select number of straits and channels. On the other hand, smaller tankers, including Panamax, Aframax, and Suezmax tankers, can dock in smaller ports and navigate through relatively narrow and shallow straits and channels.